Good evening, this is Matt Carty, MEP. This is the European Parliament in Strasbourg for the 18th time. This is not the RT News. Thanks very much for tuning in. You know how this works. This is our opportunity to let you know some of the work that Sinn Féin are doing here in the European Parliament, introduce you to some of our interesting um, friends and most importantly, hear your comments and suggestions and questions and everything else along the way. Although this week we're starting on a sad note because I've mentioned a number of times over the past couple of months, few months indeed, that one of our very close friends, <coughs> Joe Riley from Navan in County Mead, a long-standing member of the Sinn Féin leadership, a member of Mead County Council and Navan Ca Town Council when it was in existence for many years, was battling with um, a very rare um, form of cancer. Unfortunately, Joe lost his last battle since the last time we were here and we are obviously um, very, very disappointed um, with that news. He is a massive loss to his own family, of course, but also to Sinn Féin. Um, especially in his home county of Mead, but to all of us nationally. In many ways, anybody who ever met Joe would have described him as a small man, but a giant of a, a man. And I want to say um, that it is thanks to people like Joe that we are in such a strong position, that our party is closer to um, our goals than ever. Certainly, I can say without any hesitation that I wouldn't be in the European Parliament were it not for the support and help that Joe gave me. So tonight's show is dedicated to the memory of the great Joe Riley. We'll move on. Um, our guests, the one and only Leonie Reda from the County of Cork, representing the South constituency in Ireland. Thanks for coming back. Le Leah. Always um, a pleasure to be on. Good stuff. <laughs> Emma Clancy, no stranger to our regular <laughs> viewers. Um, I described you earlier on as our resident brain box. <laughs> Thank so, you. <laughs> thanks very much. And of course, we always try to have a special guest, somebody who you might not have met before. And our special guest on this show is Fabio Amati from Italia. Fabio, Hello. you are very welcome. Thanks Buongiorno. for coming along. Thank you. Along. Thank you for the invitation. Very glad to be here with you. Yeah, good, thanks. good. So everybody, you know how this w works. Very importantly, we need to spread the word. So you need to hit share. And if you do hit share, we're going to put you in a draw to win one of these towards a United Ireland mugs. Not everybody in Ireland has one yet, but we're going to try and make sure that they do. It's but tonight, close. as well as our draw to win a towards a United Ireland mug, Lynn Boylan has donated one of, Emma, will you model or show up? <laughs> you might have seen these on social media. Apparently people are crying out all over. Can we get a camera on Emma there? Yes, so these are the t-shirts that um, indicate the number of people who voted yes in the referendum to repeal the Eighth Amendment. Um, I was going to call for a recount just to scupper Lynn's t-shirt production, but um, I decided <laughs> not to do so. they say the North is next. The what, North is, is, it, is it a medium size, you know? Is no, we'll, we'll get a size you know, that, we'll get a size that, that, fits. that fits whoever, so whoever it is. So doesn't necessarily the, have to publicly So we're going to raffle is. that, but this is how we're going to raffle it. Everybody knows it's one of people's favorite parts of the show. At the end, we play a little bit of music. So cool. the first person who puts in a comment, the name of the song that we play at the end will win that T-shirt. Now, you can Genius. comment at any stage Genius during idea. the show, right. but you can only comment a maximum of twice, two goes. So you can guess what the song is going to be, or you can take a risk and wait until I start playing it. But the first person who's in our comments with the name of the song is going to win the, uh, win the t-shirt. So how does that sound for we a good idea? We had three guesses half an hour ago. He's okay. changed I know, the two. I've changed the two guesses May there. So one? put down... Um, oh, well, I think it should. Yeah, no, no, yeah, you don't know. No, none of our guests actually know what the song is going to be. So this is actually going to be really interesting. So listen, um, Fabio, you work yeah. with GUI NGL here yeah. in the European Parliament. GUI yeah. NGL, of course, is the left-wing grouping that Sinn Féin um, is associated. Can you describe or explain in 30 seconds or less, less um, the status of the left in Italy at the moment? Uh, well, it's very simply, the status of the left is very bad because we suffer an historical defeat in the last election. And uh, as you all know, I mean, there is a new government in place with a very strange majority, a so-called populist majority, but is formed mainly by the uh, Northern League that is uh, not an independentist party, but it's a very xenophobic and racist party that mm -hmm. they start in the 90s 
against people from southern Italy, and now they switch to a new enemy that are the immigrants. Yeah. But they spread hate in all so the they, society. they started off opposed and, to poor and people, and now yeah. they found people yes, who are yes, even they poorer. Yes, they found people so. even poorer. You know, yeah. The problem mm -hmm. is to target you know, the poorest, not to, to tackle the real problem that our society has. Because I made an example. Northern League has been for years in the government of the, our country together with Berlusconi, you know. Mm. The problem we had in Italy is not right only now an exception, not that now became an exception in the European political uh, scene, I will say. We have been an exception also during the are, 90s are because Northern we had League, Berlusconi. Are they a fascist I mean, party? Northern League, I would say they have, yes, fascist mm. characteristics. Yeah, the, mm. in their propaganda, in their actions, mm. in their uh, way of uh, acting against immigrants and pointing mm. the fingers only against them, yes, I would say. So that. then you have those guys, but That's then you have the five stars. The five stars that. So they vote with uh, us a lot. I, I watch how they vote. In a lot of files, they they follow they GUI. Lines. They follow GUI, they follow FDD, but they've been allied with uh, Nicolas Farage. They are yeah, the group Nicolas yeah, Farage. Yeah. And their nature, they, they came after, you know, the, the, the success of five stars. It could be explained as the failure of all the political system spectrum, the traditional mm. parties. But must be especially face, the left. Yes, and the left, yes, the mm. central left, I would say, more than us. You know, we had a but limited role because we have been only for few in government just a few months in 2006, but we paid the higher price after the, yeah, but, um, the failure of so that experience, I would but say. But it is clear. I, well, I think it is clear, um, looking from afar, that yeah. the success of both the League and the Five Star yeah. can is be attributed to the disillusionment of a lot of people the, um, in yeah. Italy. Yeah, Should the, the left not yeah. be capturing because that disillusionment? Because what is perceived as the left in Italy is not us. Okay. No. It's the Democratic Party yeah. you know, that became, came to power in 2013, you know, after the election, uh, without a, a majority of votes, but thanks to an un unconstitutional electoral law. and they put in place all the austerity policy that Brussels was asking for. A technocratic and, Yes, technocratic yeah. governments. First in 2011, pension reform, what they call reform, but it's a country reform that, you know, that now we have the highest age to go to pension in yes. Italy. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can retire only when you are uh, 67, then it's, it's growing, 68, 70. Okay. My generation will never get a public pension, I mean, according to the scheme. And uh, at the very same time, the, the reform of the labor market introducing a uh, wild precariousness, you know, for especially for the new generation. I mean, in the condition of uh, a division of the country in two sides. I mean, because we have center north and south Italy. Yeah. Uh, the unemployment rate in Italy it's uh, almost 45 percent, 47. I'm now unemployment rate. Really yeah, for the youth, youth yeah, unemployment. Oh, youth unemployment. Youth, sorry, okay. youth yeah. unemployment. Yeah. No, the, the, the average in Italy is 12 percent actually, mm. uh, and it's uh, very high, but. Yeah. And most of these people is from southern Italy when the rate yeah, is okay. even higher. I mean, and, and, the, 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 and southern no Italy is where the five star get their get support. Get more from. votes okay. and support, yes. Yeah. Okay. But they get a lot of votes also in the north. They got oh. 25, I mean, millions so of votes in, in we all saw the, the last time we, we were here, we were speaking about yeah, the commission intervening. Some, yeah. feening, um, and the news was. Um, in the last week or so that the government had been formed and I think many people says okay see what happens yeah. but now Italy is in the news for all the wrong reasons because yeah. a ship um, laden with the most desperate yeah. people in the world seeking yeah. sanctuary has been turned away by your government yes this was very cynic by mm. the Northern League and I would say also that the five stars uh, they were disappointing in following yeah. uh, without any yeah. saying the behavior of the shameful behavior of the ministry of the interior you know because you close the port for these poor people but at the very same time what he wants to do you know is uh, already announced now he wants to to reduce taxes for all the rich people, for example. We're introducing Italy as well. It's the five stars? No, no. Uh, the, 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 Northern the, Northern the new League, government yeah. and the five yeah. stars agree. So mm -hmm. it's very clear. It will be a government of the rich mm -hmm. against the poorest mm -hmm. to satisfy the fear of the working people, of the unemployed people that has lost hope, you know. The, uh, the, the, most of the people in Italy that our problem comes from the immigrants, mm -hmm. comes from the fact that we have too much. But if you look to the to the numbers, the numbers of refugees we have in our country, the numbers of immigrants living in our country, we are not 
So there is well, no course, invasion. Well, of course, you have to say that Italy, yeah. you know, wasn't part responsible for those. No, we should, yes. you Libya. should declare. Yes, uh, we were responsible, uh, and the Northern League was at the government at Leon that time. Leon is actually Italian. Yeah. No, my my grandmother was Italian, mm. uh, so yeah, there is a connection there. But certainly, I think you know, Italy shirking its responsibilities when they indeed instigated yeah. uh, the, the whole Libya attack and all yeah. of that, and now they're refusing to accept those immigrants, given yeah. that they're in, in Italian waters. At that time, was Berlusconi in power? Yeah, with the support of the Northern League. But just to make an example. And they voted, for example, all the European treaties without saying anything. At but that the thing time. I find, and we have this argument in Ireland, this isn't yeah. in terms of people blaming and, mm. in many cases, people's fears being exploited by yeah. um, politicians to blame yeah. um, refugees. But you, you're the Italians. You're like the Irish. Yes, we are you like the, the Irish. Bronx, you go to the Bronx. You go to sixty million sixty million Italian living abroad. We wouldn't have you know, the best whatever, movies whatever in the go, world whatever, ever made if it wasn't for Italians go, emigrating. A Kurdish or an Italian restaurant. I mean, yeah. on a, an Irish around an, an Irish, Irish bar around bar. the corner. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Um, it's because of that. So, but okay, Emma. This is where I get conflicted, and I wonder: Does the Europe is the European Commission actually right to ignore? democratic decisions made by people because this no. democracy crack leaves us with this type of government Look, in Italy. I, th I think the reason that this government, the first elected government in Italy for many years, has come to power is precisely because of the approach of the European Commission and the EU institutions to democracy. So it's, it's par partly a, a result of the structure of the Eurozone, yeah. which punishes the southern and the yeah. peripheral economies. Um, which has meant that Italy has and suffered... And the Monaghan economy. <laughs> it it the has peaks. meant that Italy has been one of the countries that has suffered the worst under um, the crisis, but more generally uh, under in, in, in the Eurozone. Um, then you've had, uh, you've had in the last couple of uh, weeks, couple of months, um, you've had attempts to, to stop the, uh, a government forming. You've had attempts to stop the the elected majority from appointing people that they wanted. I'm completely opposed to this government. I mean, like Fabio said, the, the Northern League are openly fascist. Um, and the Five Star have been tremendously disappointing because they they are, you know, supposedly an anti-establishment party, but they're allowing themselves to be led completely tremendously politically. Tremendously yeah. disappointing. That's, <laughs> yeah. uh, that's, that's, that's wrong, harsh words. Yeah. Yeah. I, completely, I completely agree with you <laughs> about that. We but then you have you have the commission. You have a an actual commissioner saying that the markets will punish Italy. Yeah. yeah. You have um, the ECB, you know, behaving in a completely biased way throughout the month of May. It underbought Italian bonds in order to punish Italy and in order to mm. uh, scare the Italians. Um, it it overbought uh, German securities at the same time. Um, so it makes me think that Juncker and Mario Draghi are sitting in a room somewhere thinking, you know, how best can we fuel the rise of fascism yeah. across yeah. the European Union? Because that's Harsh the words <laughs> there from Alexander. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Leah, Leah, um, buongiorno, oh, Leah, I should say as an Italian. But, um, but aren't, the, aren't the Irish people actually blessed to have a strong, cohesive left alternative in Sinn Féin. Well, of course, and we're going to see more of that now so. this weekend with yeah. the Ordesh, where we're I'm going to sure talk about that, that, later, that yeah. droves of people will be joining after that. But yeah, we do provide a very credible alternative left. Uh, and I think more and more people are recognising that now. So uh, hopefully we won't be going down the but path there is, of our, of there, our there, there yeah. is a pattern where you see, and, um, and this isn't necessarily criticism, Fabio, but where yeah. you see your big and growing fascist and far right mm political movements, you generally see a fragmented left. Um, and yeah. you, uh, uh, and, Absolutely. And you don't I see agree with uh, you. We are uh, trying cohesive. to unify, yes. Yeah. Your party is? My party is Communist Foundation Party. We have been part in the, over the last year of many coalitions, the one that uh, led us to be elected here. Yeah. And um, last time, power to the people, what, what was, uh, I would say, um, a last moment move that yeah. didn't pay. But we are trying to... to to rebuild the left, also starting from so the grassroots level. So you're standing the next yes. European elections, for example. Yes, what we will stand for will European elections. We are left? in the process of creating a okay. left-wing coalition, trying to do the, to the real left, the one that is not keen to the European Commission dictas, mm. because this was the problem that we had. Mm. You know, that the, the, what is, was the official left in Italy has been perceived by the people as the most loyal, not to the Italian people, but to the 
European oh, yes, uh, criteria yeah. and through austerity measures. I actually spoke to somebody, is, yeah, an MEP from and this is the, the Democratic Party. Uh, yeah, I and always they, find they always the, say that they def yeah. they attack they the new government because they want to defend the wrong policy that Europe yeah. is mm. is carrying on. Um, to make an example, we were the only one in the 90s voting against massive treaty and saying what yeah. would have happened. Unfortunately, right. we were right, yeah. absolutely right. Mm. But then we have now to regain the trust of the people. That left is not. What is but can I ask a question there, because I yeah. think, and this is a worry that we probably have in Ireland as well, mm. to an extent, from certain sectors of the society, mm. the whole debacle with that awful um, ship, and people will be saying, well, wasn't the Italian foreign minister, wasn't he right to kind of keep, you know, put the foot down and say, no, they're not coming in here and it's going to be Spain's problem, or somebody, Spain had to cough up eventually and, and say, okay, we'll take them on. And the idea that people have about migrants that, you know, they're coming to our country, they're taking our jobs, they're taking our, you know, livelihoods. Yeah. Uh, and it's feeding into that kind of thing of the, the person that would think, well, he stood up, he stood his ground and he got what he wanted. And completely missing the point of the humanitarian yeah. aspect of it and, you know, not knowing what the backstop to it. And that kind of, that's feeding into that mindset of, you know, the other, let's keep them out and that kind of isolationist. And some thing. people yeah. can take that view, but I would argue that the two sets of people who can't take that view, maybe the three, are the Irish, the Italians, and the, the Greeks. And the Greek or the Spanish, all, 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 all over the world. The world. And so you we see... It could have been us on that boat, yeah. and indeed we were. And, and, and you know, you right? cannot stop one no. uh, ship. I mean, it doesn't yeah. change anything. Plus, the problem is the globalization, the policy that we yeah. bossed and refueled over the last year that make all these people losing their job, losing the house, yeah. the houses. Well, the wars, to... the wars that we made, you know, the, in Afghanistan, yeah. Yeah. in yeah. 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 Mediterranean, yeah. in Syria. Well, no, we are bombing yeah. everywhere and yeah. then we complain about the fact that people is escaping from the world. This is yeah, really and instead of blaming the people who yeah. have actually destroyed jobs yeah. and, uh, you know, lowered wages and made people's jobs either secure or non-existent, instead of blaming them, people start to blame people who are less fortunate than but them. But you can see the person who looks different from you living in your community. You can't see yeah, the, can be exploited guy by the, who, the billionaire who's evading his taxes no. and all the rest. I want to move on because we're yeah. actually yeah. flying through this flying, as, racing all, through, as racing always. Through. Um, Leah, we're yes. fighting for workers' rights here, here in the European we Parliament. Are the interpreters are uh, having a, a battle. They uh, are. Wouldn't it not be handier if everyone just spoke English, no? Well, wouldn't that just be so handy, Matt Carthy? You really? should go on a language strike with uh, I, I think I'm going to continue Irish. this completely, Oscar. <laughs> right, uh, right. right. yeah, yeah, yeah. no. Uh, no, this is interpretations on translators, and look, you know, they're not uh, being afforded for workers' rights. These are the interpreters here, are, that in are the here, translators in, yeah. here in the European Parliament. And they're here for very long hours, and it's particularly pertaining to the newer ones that are coming in that are just not afforded the same rights. As it happens, I'm going into the chamber shortly to speak on improving language learning and mutual uh, recognition of languages. That's coming so up now. That's coming up now. So I'm going to actually just say that. Can give I a just say, the Leah, you're say an no. incredibly busy MEP. I am. Um, I've been I here was since eight o'clock this morning. I was in a meeting. Yeah. I actually, I'm not going to, because uh, it will take yeah. a long time. But I had quite an adventure. Oh, getting I know. Into you keep European telling us that. Yeah, this morning. Yeah, you have I haven't adventures. actually told anybody, um, but it did involve me. Um, hopping in a car that I thought was a taxi that wasn't a taxi. But anyway, okay. oh, read my memoirs at some stage in the <laughs> they're, future. There's a very frightened Strasbourg man that hadn't a word of English that I was <laughs> that trying to have explain. A full chapter. But, but there is anyway, one thing on, I would please. like to say yeah. outside of all of that. At 8 o'clock this morning. And now I you're going to be here until... Oh, I'm going to be here till whenever it's finished. But I do want to give a message of hope, though, to all our young people out there, especially those who are 18 because the uh, free interrail pass is, ah, is up. No, no, but talk look at it is. And look at 26th of June a is the closing date. Of money. Listen, when your kids are money. 18 yes, I and they're coming to you and they're saying, Dad, can you give me money to millions, go to Europe? And you'll say no. Millions, no. millions of and you'll euro, say no. And it actually discriminates against countries like Ireland that have a bad rail network. Oh, We're I actually think investing. Or, We're given uh, when your Irish, children, Irish When your money. children come up to you at 18 I'm, years of age when my and children, say, Dad, give me money to go to Europe and you'll say no. Them to have a job oh, in yeah. the community that they live in, not a feckin' free for rail pack um, for those pass of you around who are Europe living in the real world. By the people who, who actually cause the recession in the first place. The deadline is 26th of June. 
another European gimmick. It's actually millions of euro <laughs> being spent on a PR oh, stunt by the European you know what? Union Enjoy rather those than actually who have investing. It. Enjoy yeah, it. free beer passes or something. Really, people oh, who actually yeah. be able to avail of it are people who can actually afford it. I was lucky. My father was a rail worker, so yeah. I didn't pay the rail. Good. Oh, so, yeah. See, there we go. You didn't <laughs> pay, free, but yeah. poor kids in Ireland yeah. who don't have the money, don't have a bean, they can now apply for this. Yeah, so long as they don't need to eat or stay anywhere when they're actually going around on the rail. Look, it could be worse. I can't believe you actually endorse that scam here. No, the, think, not the RT no, news. I That's think. like something you get in the actual RT news. Well, it's obviously got you very exercised. <laughs> it does. I get, and, the, I and get, and get I might get all about those, these those 18 year olds who were really dying to go to Monaghan. They now might say, do you know what? I could actually visit Paris, perhaps. Or yeah, I could, could go, go on to a whole Italy. country. They'd come, they 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 come to Monaghan if there was an actual rail network. Wouldn't they would, invest yeah. in those millions of euros? Do you see what I've transport services in communities that don't have them? And your kids will be coming to me asking about it. My kids probably will, but I'll They will. And you'll say, no, you're not going anywhere. Outside of Monaghan. No, no, they can go all the way. Well, don't, don't be spending the money Cork, that should yeah. be actually invested in communities. Not on even a for three weeks. PR, not even for three weeks. That's not a little bit excessive. Tell me about your education conference at the weekend. Something positive. Again, that, it was uh, young people, uh, you know, yeah. under 18s and over, and it was very worthwhile. It was a huge conference, very well attended in Limerick, and I'm hoping that it'll drive the policies of Sinn Fein towards education. And it was about access to education and equality. Uh, we spoke about you know parents who have special kids with special needs and autism and and obviously the big issue that's there is low paid teachers. Teachers are now spending six years training to become teachers, mm -hmm. and they're coming out and they're at very very low pay, far lower than their counterparts uh, who've been teaching for a while. So there's no incentive for them. So our education standards are, are going way way down. We have a lack of Irish language teachers, which is again I think a kind of a cynical move of just completely eroding our rights as Irish language speakers. Uh, and if we don't do something about it now, it's going to cost the state a huge amount of money. In the long run because the support structures aren't there uh, and the conference addressed all that it was really really worth well worth it uh, and it will be feeding into our policy well done. i'm conscious of time now well done and yes doing your fabio job i need a yeah. number between one and 52 please 45 45 that's a high that's number. good number <laughs> oh Gemma murphy Gemma Murphy has won a tour to United Ireland. Okay. We've a couple <laughs> of free trip to Man. A couple <laughs> of just don't take the train. Or, uh, um, there's a. For a free mug, a lot of people saying we won mugs, we didn't get one. If you're at the Ardesh at the weekend, I'll try and make sure somebody has mugs. Don't come to me about them, but come to someone in the office. Don't come to me about them yeah, either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, if you see Emma Canty, Emma, you're in charge of the mugs at the weekend. So if you, can prove, if, if you can prove that you um, actually won a mug, we'll hand you over a mug. Now, nobody's actually participated in my game yet. So just in case... At the end, you in a few played minutes. The song yet. No, but no. Did, did, <laughs> to guess yeah. what the song is going to be, that's the whole oh, point. Or before you ever play it. At any stage. Oh, right. At any stage. They didn't oh. explain the, that first, properly. Okay, so the first person <laughs> who comments the name of the song that we are about to play will win one of the t shirts. Just Fabio has yeah. a favourite song. Mod tell him about it. I've read you. Yeah. No, what and which song you, are you know, you know Fab <laughs> Fabio loves Go On Home British Soldiers. He I know. Go like on in my child as well. You in, know? In, yes. in Italy. Yeah. Yes. Okay, sing a song. Sing a, sing a line of it. In, Ita in yeah, Italian? In Italian, yeah. It might be less controversial. Less controversial <laughs> yeah, yeah, than yeah, Go yeah, Home. Uh, can I? Yeah. Okay. Well, I can sing Bella Ciao. You know? No, you no, know, no, no. So, show the t shirt. Again. The North is next. Okay, so if you want to win that T-shirt, name the song that you think we're going to play. You have two guesses, but and obviously, if nobody has guessed when the song actually starts, you can put the and the first person <laughs> will 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 win. Emma, um, I read in the news. I read the news today. Oh boy, um, somebody else is claiming that Ireland is a tax haven. Um, well, th this report is interesting because it doesn't just claim that Ireland is a tax haven or that Ireland is one of the worst tax havens in the world. It claims that Ireland is the worst tax haven in the world. Um, so this report that came out uh, a couple of days ago, um, it was reported in the media today, uh, led by Gabrielle Zuckman, who's one of the most respected economists in the world. Um, it measures the, the profits that uh, multinationals are declaring are in a range of countries usually considered as tax havens and compares it to their actual economic activity or real economic activity. So it found that Ireland um, is top of the list. So it looked at 2015, the year, um, and found that uh, 90, 90 billion euro of profits were declared in Ireland, um, which was more than the entire Caribbean islands wow. put together. 
um, and far ahead of the Netherlands and Switzerland and everywhere else it's considered to be a tax haven. So the reason, I, I think the reason why um, this was found was because, partly because it was 2015, so that was the year that Fine Gael introduced this ridiculous policy of 100% um, tax deduction for intellectual property. So Apple moved its entire um, intellectual property, mm. property from the Caribbean islands uh, right. into, into Ireland. So they moved it onshore, but they didn't pay a cent in tax. Mm. Um, so we're actually, next week, we're publishing a report here, a study that we have been carrying out. Um, and it relates to Apple's uh, tax structure and the tax rate that it is paying in Ireland, in Europe, in the world. Um, we're publishing it next Thursday. Uh, but the, the main finding but, that we had... While I was reading the news today, I also read the Irish government and all economic commentators in Ireland tell me Ireland's not a tax haven. Yes, which, so is, which is the, why is the, the standard feature of countries that are tax havens. Oh, <laughs> no, <I'm not> <laughs> OK. But but no, 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 very so much like racists. So <laughs> we're not a I'm tax not, haven, um, but... but <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the, thing, the argument that the Irish government is making is that well, you know, you don't just, me so they've measured, they've compared the profits with the yeah. amount of wages that are being paid. Mm -hmm. And that the wages is the measure of real economic activity that has mm -hmm. always been used. Um, and the Irish government is saying, well, that's oversimplistic. You can't just look at wages. You need to, you know, there are a lot of other activities that can take place. Like, for example, you move all your intellectual property from one tax haven onshore onto Ireland. Yeah. So they're, they're saying that's, that's the basis of their argument. And it just doesn't hold mm -hmm. water. Good job. We got a comment there. Anybody, somebody wants to know, have we any tickets for the Pope's gig? <laughs> um, not yet. If we do have any, I will certainly raffle them off. Um, um, Leah, yes. our comrade Lynn, along with Ingus O'Snodig and oh. Sean Crow, launched this document. And do we want, want people to? to read it. Yes, we will do. We're giving well, people well, jobs today. Well. This is about. Um, Irish neutrality, the need to protect it and the need to re 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 well, well, reassert it. The it's need online. to avoid joining an EU army. Please, please, please yeah. read it. Um, will we have these at the Ardèche, I presume? We, we will. The, we'll the central argument of it is that our Irish neutrality policy shouldn't just be a policy or it shouldn't, it should be actually put in the constitution. Yes, to be, and they're um, absolutely, that's a no-brainer. Yeah, so have a read of it. Well done to everybody. Talking about taxes, Sure, Fabio, nobody in Italy pays taxes anyway. I was reading that as no, well. No, but <laughs> only workers <laughs> pay taxes. Though. That's the yeah. problem yeah. in Italy, you know, because the workers um, pay 80% of the income of the but Italian state. Ways, but be careful, because mm -hmm. the new government want to mm -hmm. put in place a flat tax of 20% that yeah. will compete right, yeah. with <laughs> you as a... Uh, as tax tenure. heaven, because this is what's going on in but Europe. But this is an no, income tax flat rate of 20%. Yeah. We actually had a party in the yeah. last general election called Renewa, yeah. um, who are a little bit to the right of yeah. Northern Ireland, <laughs> yeah. um, but um, they, they proposed they want, a flat rate tax as well. They proposed um, threshold 20 and 15%, you know, mm -hmm. to, to do. And at the very same time, they propose to increase pensions, to introduce basic income, you know, that's something that they will never do. What yeah. they will do is to destroy what remain of the Italian welfare states and uh, yeah. the health system, that what will happen. Yeah. I, yeah. So we used I to fear. have a situation, you know, the Italian Mafia were famous, now the Mafia now, are running the European Commission, um, no. in, uh, well, you, they I just don't call say, themselves a Mafia. <laughs> they don't call themselves, I mean, <laughs> unfortunately it's still a serious problem we face. Still? The criminal and the organized crime, yes, mm. in some part of the countries, but it's a change, it's not the one that you are used to seeing the movie. I mean, yeah. the, yeah. Padre, the Godfather the is, yeah. is not mm. anymore like that. But it's a good, financial. Good movies, it's a, you know, thanks to the, 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 the yeah. neoliberalism also helps mm. that, that without control on the movement of capitals, this is the heaven for the exactly. criminals. And especially with the crisis, mm. what the, 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 the organized crime has as liquidity. Yeah. They can buy properties, yeah. you know, they can do investment. They don't call they, it the more, they call they, them vulture they can funds now. Yeah. 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 Um, well, um, unfortunately. Really good. Now, so I have a few things I need time. to say because we're running um, short on um, time. Um, Ardesh weekend. Yeah. I love the Ardesh weekend. We're um, going directly. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we're going directly from Strasbourg to Paris to Belfast Amorach. 
there's a few of us on the same flight and I think Hurricane or there's some storm Hector is coming in so I hope it stays away until we're landed safe. Good job. I, live in I, lived in I know you're on a different flight so Matt so you, you might have to carry the whole Ardesh without No I'll make us. it home I yeah. always make it, make, oh, make you do, it, yeah. make it home. Yeah. Um, tomorrow night in fact if I make it home I'm going to be in a debate on globalisation all the things we've been talking about yeah. tonight um, with um, Junior Minister Helen McEntee of Fine Gael and some other right wingers um, mm. Um, about and young, somebody from Euro found and <laughs> yeah and there's someone from the trade union movement I think yeah, as well so okay yeah. so I won't be on my own but it's going to be a good debate it's in the spirit store in Dundalk I think about seven o'clock assuming as Leah says that she hasn't jinxed me and my flight actually arrives <laughs> I, in time I for I those of you not, who are going to the Irish well and who now. are delegates um, myself Martina Anderson Lynn Boylan are all candidates in the Ardcora election so we need number one votes we need people to mobilise. We this need to. Why, this is why Matt brings me on here. Leah's, yeah, yeah, Leah's yeah, yeah. our um, real boss. She doesn't need to <laughs> go for yeah. elections to our quarters or anything else like um, like that. So listen, keep hitting share. We need to we need to build people. You know our capacity. Make us feel like we're doing something um, <laughs> useful. Don't forget if you think you know what the song is going to be at the end, <laughs> write it in or wait. But the first person who has it right is going to Fabio. You're a good man. Thank, Thank you, so you much. Thank you very much. Emma, Thank brilliant you. as always. Now, this is where the hard bit comes along because this is where I actually have to try and um, <laughs> get the song working. Um, so, listen, thanks very much. If you've guessed this, there's a T-shirt on the way. I don't know, but we'll see afterwards. See if this works on the mic. <laughs> oh, I won. <laughs> <laughs> To me, Davy Seppeli. That's my favorite. Seppeli, that Seppeli, that right. counts. <laughs> yeah, now we became so popular again <laughs> thanks to the Netflix. <laughs> I, I saw Bella, Bella Ciao, Bella Ciao, Bella Ciao, Ciao, Ciao. I thought you were talking about the Prime Minister, uh, Interior Minister, getting onto a bus and yeah, people spontaneously yeah, started singing Bella Ciao. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Leah, you're a star. Good evening, Margaret. Thanks, Leah. Yes. See you in Italy. See you. Thumb left. When Good luck for our fish. Or tomorrow in yeah. yeah. Or in the chamber <laughs> shortly. Yeah. Bella ciao, bella ciao, bella ciao, ciao, ciao. Do we have a winner? Or Do we have a winner? I would see. Yeah, I'm sure we do. But it'll be announced the next time. So. All right, okay. I wanted to test that. As a, see, that's the first time I've ever played a non Irish <laughs> song. Yeah. Songs, that's it's a, very that's popular. Nobody in Ireland was going to get that. You yeah, do realise that. Yeah, I know. But all yeah. I want to do is get the comment. We're finished. Have you seen Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah of course, yeah. Good talk. <laughs> yeah. I don't. <laughs> I hope we're finished.